Okay, hello all. Here is my presentation on the evolution of the horse or Equus caballus. 55 million years ago, North America was a swamp covered in cypress trees. Small horse-like animals called Epis ran around, or Eohippus ran around, or um, they ran away also from hoof predators called Mesonox. Parasidactyls, or odd toes, un untold ungulates, include horses, tapirs, and rhinos. The story of the horse is a tale of constant adaptation and radiation, all in response to climatically changing environments in the North American grasslands. Eohippus had few teeth with low crests for chewing thin rainforest vegetation. Eohippus and Merichippus had more and larger teeth with larger crests for chewing more resistant grasses. Merichippus began showing the iconic horse-shaped skull that we see in the present-day equines. Perihippus leonisus is not shown here, but it is another important milestone in equine evolution. They were the first to have teeth erupt continuously when worn down to reveal more surface chewing area. This is also called a hypodont. Now we have equus with their typically long and broad skull with thick molars. So we have toes. Eohyptus had four toes in the front and three in the back. Mesohyptus, a descendant of Eohippus, appeared 38 million years ago. It had three toes. Merichippus, which appeared around 30 million years ago, stood on its tiptoes and is double the weight of Mesohyptus. Philohyptus is a significant animal because it is the first true equine to have bare all of its weight on a single toe. And we have present day horses now, whom are more various in forms thanks to human breeding. Eohyptus lived in forest climates. It was so small and in movement was much more simpler. In the, me in the mid Eocene thermal maximum was coming to the, oh, I'm sorry. The Eocene thermal maximum was coming to a close at this time, and 49 million years ago, the climate began to cool, and the landscape was changing to dry glasslands. <clears throat> then Eohyptus vanished along with the changes. Mesohyptus, a descendant of Eohyptus, appeared in these grasslands. Then they diversified into Meohyptus, and they moved together in the beginning of the Oligocene Epoch. Mesohippus disappeared and Meohippus survived. And then after that, they traveled the, glass, the grasslands and their toes, weight, and teeth began adapting to the North American grasslands until we see the horses we have today who can bear all of their weight on a single toe. And here we have a closer picture. The Eohyptus has those four digits on a single toe. And you can see how they just sort of disappear over time into one single toe. And of course their size gets much bigger. Eohyptus was about the size of a dog, maybe a small dog at best. Okay. Thank you.